especially our brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Gaza and in Rafah and all the areas wherein which they are being attacked, massacred and pillaged. May Allah protect them and protect all of us. It pains the heart. But getting back to the month of Dhul Hijjah, when the moon is sighted, the blessings begin. When the blessings begin, you need to realize that something is required of you. You need to become conscious of the fact that this month is one of the haram months. What are the other haram months? There are three all in order and the one that is slightly separate. So you have Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Qi'dah, Dhul Qi'dah, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram and Rajab. Those are the months of those are the months known as the haram months. May Allah Almighty grant us an understanding. Nonetheless, as much as I'm conscious of this, I need to increase my acts of worship. And before I think about increasing my acts of worship, I need to stop all the sins that I'm engaged in. If you go to Makkah, will you continue with the zina that you've been committing may allah protect us you should have stopped anyway as a believer and engaged in istighfar and tawbah but if you go there and you commit a sin it is indeed multiplied because that is no place that is similar to another in value it is very high so i cannot go to mecca and decide that i am going to forget that i'm in a sacred place the same applies if i am in the days of Dhul Hijjah or the days of Ramadan or the nights of Ramadan. I need to cut off sin. What's the point of fasting through Ramadan when I'm sinning and I'm not even worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. The whole idea of fasting is to hold back. If I'm going to hold back from halal for the pleasure of Allah, surely haram is nowhere in that equation. I'm supposed to be holding back even be, whether it is Ramadan or not. The same applies here. The 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the first thing you do before you think of doing good deeds is to cut off the bad. What is the bad? Swearing, deceiving, major sins such as adultery, someone intoxicating people on drugs. These are major sins. When you intoxicate yourself, it's a major sin. Why? Because you are closing off your mind, even if it is partially. And the mind is what distinguishes you from animal. May Allah Almighty grant us sound mind. So it's a season to work on your bad habits. Cut them off. Come on. We need you in the ummah. Look at the ummah bleeding. Take a look at what's going on. Do you really think that your bad habits will help the ummah or yourself? You need to eradicate them. Work on them. Work hard on these bad habits. And some might say, well, you know, I'm only smoking anyway. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I say this all the time. You can cut that out too. Make an intention. Allah will help you. Allah will strengthen you. Be a disciplined mu'min whom when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the day you return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're in a good condition. I want to meet Allah. If I meet Allah like this, I'm happy. At least I'm, I'm someone who has worked on my habits and I can meet Allah in a condition where at least I tried. Allah's mercy will descend on us. So work on your bad habits. Chop off. Something you might be committing that might be a secret between you and Allah. People sometimes are hooked onto pornography on their phones. Every little while they go back. They want to check again. They, after some time they have strengthened themselves. Then they, they, they become weak and they go back again. Don't make yourself strong inshallah. Meaning don't do that, but rather make yourself strong for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a season. It's a season of working in, on your bad habits.